Antifungal therapy targets various components of the fungal cell. Important targets in antifungal therapy include the cell membrane, cell wall, DNA synthesis, and cholesterol synthesis. Ergosterol, a cholesterol unique to fungi, is the target of amphotericin B. This antifungal binds ergosterol and incites the formation of pores that allow leakage of electrolytes. Remember to supplement potassium and magnesium in patients who are on amphotericin because they tend to lose these important electrolytes through the now permeable renal tubules. The mechanism of action of amphotericin may be remembered by amphotericin as tearing holes in the fungal membrane. Amphotericin, aka amphoterrible, has numerous unpleasant side effects, which include fever chills, hypotension, nephrotoxicity, arrhythmias, anemia, and IV phlebitis. As such, this drug is typically reserved for only the most serious systemic mycoses caused by such organisms as Cryptococcus, Blastomyces, Coccidioides, Aspergillus, Histoplasma, Canada, and Mucor. This drug may be used intrathecally for fungal meningitis, but does not cross the blood-brain barrier when administered systemically. Amphotericin delivered in a liposomal depot has fewer toxic side effects. Nystatin, which has the same mechanism of action as amphotericin B, is limited to topical use because of its extreme toxicity when used systemically. Topical indications include oral candidiasis, although only as a swish and swallow preparation, as well as diaper rash and vulvovaginal candidiasis. The azoles all bear names ending in their drug class. Azoles work by inhibiting ergosterol synthesis through inhibition of the P450 enzyme that converts lanosterol to ergosterol. This is another class of antifungals that is reserved for systemic mycoses. Unlike amphotericin, the azoles have the ability to cross the blood-brain barrier, so they have the utility in combating cryptococcal meningitis in AIDS patients. The azoles are also used to treat candidal infections. Fluconazole is the drug of choice for cryptococcal meningitis. Ketoconazole is used against blastomyces, coccidioides, histoplasma, candida, as well as the treatment of hypercortisolism. Clotrimazole and myconazole are used for topical fungal infections. Gynecomastia is a common side effect with the use of systemic azoles due to inhibition of hormone synthesis. Liver dysfunction is also related to the mechanism of action of the azoles due to their inhibition of cytochrome P450. Fever and chills are less specific manifestations of azole toxicity but are variably encountered with use. This antifungal is frequently used with amphotericin B in systemic fungal infections. Flucytosin penetrates fungal cell walls where it is deaminated by fungal cytosine deaminase to 5-fluorouracil. Mammalian cells do not convert it to 5-fluorouracil. It competes with uracil, disrupting both RNA and protein synthesis. It also may get converted to 5-fluorodeoxyuridylic acid, which inhibits the enzyme thymidylate synthetase and disrupts DNA synthesis. Therefore, flucytosin inhibits DNA synthesis by conversion to 5-fluorouracil by cytosine deaminase. Like other chemotherapeutic agents, toxic side effects include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and bone marrow suppression. The use of caspofungin is limited to treating invasive aspergillosis and candida infections. This medication inhibits cell wall synthesis by inhibiting beta-glucan synthesis. Terbinafine inhibits squalene epoxidase, which blocks conversion of squalene to lanosterol. Terbinafine is used to treat dermatophytoses, particularly the onychomycoses. Remember, its toxicity includes abnormal liver function tests and visual disturbances. Griseofulvin disrupts mitosis by interfering with microtubule function. This oral PO medication is used to treat superficial fungal infections by dermatophytes such as tinea and ringworm. The use of griseofulvin is limited due to its teratogenic and carcinogenic potential. Other unpleasant side effects include confusion, headaches, and upregulation of the P450 enzymes. Here are a few drugs that are useful for fighting protozoan infections. Pyrimethamine is useful against Plasmodium falciparum. It is also the drug of choice for toxoplasmosis when combined with sulfadiazine. 
Suramin and Malarsapril can treat trypanosoma brucei infections. Nifertamox is toxic to trypanosoma cruzi, and sodium stibogluconate is useful against leishmaniasis. Chloroquine is used to treat malaria. It functions by blocking the heme polymerase enzyme of plasmodium. Due to resistance against chloroquine in many parts of the world, mefloquine is used with increasing frequency for prophylaxis and treatment. Antibiotics used to treat helminth infections include mebendazole, parantolpamoate, ivermectin, diethylcarbamazine, and prosequantol. You can refer back to the Helminth section to remember which drugs treat specific diseases. Shown here is a representation of the different aspects of viral infection targeted by antiviral therapy, each of which will be discussed separately. Amantadine is used only in the prophylaxis and treatment of influenza A. It blocks viral penetration and uncoating of the M2 protein. Unfortunately, 90% of all influenza A strains are resistant to amantadine due to mutation in the M2 protein, so use of this medication is diminishing. It does, however, have utility in the treatment of Parkinson's disease, as this drug also stimulates the release of dopamine from intact nerve terminals. The unpleasant cerebellar side effects, including ataxia, dizziness, and slurred speech, are also a deterrent to the use of amantadine. Romantidine, another derivative, has fewer CNS side effects, and it does not cross the blood-brain barrier. These anti-influenza medications work by inhibiting influenza neuraminidase, which decreases the release of progeny virus, and have utility against both influenza A and B. Ribavirin is used in the treatment of RSV and chronic hepatitis C infections. Ribavirin competitively inhibits IMP dehydrogenase, thus inhibiting synthesis of guanine nucleotides. Acyclovir is a guanosine analog that is monophosphorylated by HSV VZV thymidine kinase, preferentially inhibiting viral DNA polymerase by chain termination. This agent is active against HSV VZV and EBV. It is used to treat HSV mucocutaneous and genital lesions and encephalitis caused by the aforementioned viruses. This is also considered a prophylactic agent in immunocompromised patients. It should be noted, however, that acyclovir is only effective against active HSV and VZV, not the latent forms. Valacyclovir is a pro-drug of acyclovir and has better oral bioavailability. For herpes zoster, use the related drug, famcyclovir. Gancyclovir is another guanosine analog that preferentially inhibits viral DNA polymerase, typically used in the treatment of CMV in immunocompromised patients. Valgancyclovir, a prodrug of gancyclovir, has better oral availability. Gancyclovir is converted to 5-monophosphate through activation by CMV viral kinase, or HSV VZV thymidine kinase. This drug is more toxic than its counterpart, acyclovir, causing leukopenia, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, and renal toxicity. Foscarnet is a drug that is a pyrophosphate analog that inhibits viral DNA polymerase through competitive inhibition at the pyrophosphate binding site. Unlike gancyclovir and acyclovir, foscarnet does not require activation by viral kinase. This nephrotoxic agent is used in the treatment of CMV retinitis unresponsive to gancyclovir and for treatment of acyclovir-resistant HSV. Cytofovir is a drug that preferentially inhibits viral DNA polymerase but does not require a phosphorylation by a viral kinase. It is useful in the treatment of CMV retinitis and acyclovir-resistant HSV. Highly active antiretroviral therapy is initiated when patients present with CD4 counts less than 350, a high viral load, or an AIDS-defining illness. The combination of multiple, typically three drugs, helps prevent resistance, much in the way multidrug therapy has evolved in the treatment of tuberculosis. The drug classes used in HIV therapy are the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, or NRTIs, protease inhibitors, and non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, or NNRTIs, all of which we'll discuss separately. 
The typical regimens used in the treatment of HIV consist of either two NRTIs plus a protease inhibitor, a NNRT, or an integrase inhibitor. We will first discuss the protease inhibitors, all of which have names ending in NAVIR. These drugs prevent the maturation of new viruses by inhibiting the action of HIV-1 protease. This viral enzyme found on the Pol gene cleaves the polypeptide products of HIV mRNA into their functional parts, an integral step in the assembly of virions. As you will notice as we discuss the antiretroviral medications, their unpleasant side effects are an unfortunate complication of medication therapy. Proteases are associated with adverse reactions such as hyperglycemia, nausea, diarrhea, and lipodystrophy. The NRTIs are typically referred to by their respective acronyms. These drugs work through competitive inhibition of nucleotide binding to reverse transcriptase, thus terminating the DNA chain. Like several of the other antiviral agents we have already discussed, these drugs require the activity of viral enzymes, in this case thymidine kinase, for their activation. ZDV, which was formerly known as AZT, warrants particular mention, as it is one of the more widely used NRTIs and has particular utility as general prophylaxis, such as in needle stick exposures of healthcare workers, and in pregnancy to reduce the risk of fetal transmission. The NNRTIs have a similar mechanism of action to the NRTIs, although the former binds reverse transcriptase at a different site and doesn't require viral activation. The side effects of the reverse transcriptase inhibitors include bone marrow suppression and peripheral neuropathy. Lactic acidosis is classically associated with the nucleosides, and non-nucleosides are more likely to cause rash, which can be as severe as a full-blown Steven Johnson syndrome. Raltogravir is the only drug in the class of integrase inhibitors, which inhibits HIV genome integration into host cell chromosome by reversibly inhibiting HIV integrase. A side effect is hypercholesterolemia. Interferons are glycoproteins synthesized by virus-infected cells that block the replication of both RNA and DNA viruses. Certain interferons warrant mention, such as interferon alpha, which is used for chronic hepatitis B and C, and Kaposi sarcoma. Interferon beta is used for multiple sclerosis, and interferon gamma is used in patients with NADPH oxidase deficiency. Interferon alpha is used in the treatment of chronic hepatitis B and C, as well as Kaposi sarcoma. Interferon beta has shown some effectiveness in the treatment of multiple sclerosis. Remember the mnemonic, countless safe moms take really good care, to help learn the antibiotics and their common side effects when taken during pregnancy. Clarithromycin is frankly embryotoxic. Sulfonamides can cause carnicterus. Aminoglycosides are associated with autotoxicity, while fluoroquinolones are associated with cartilage damage, although this has only been demonstrated in animal models. Metronidazole ribavirin, and griseofulvin are all teratogens. Chloramphenicol causes gray baby syndrome, and speaking of discoloration, tetracyclines are classically associated with discolored teeth as well as inhibition of bone growth. 